G'day, fellas. Welcome to the sixth game in the series between Harrison and Noel. Spawning in the north of the map is Harrison playing on the Spanish. And his opponent, spawning in the south of the map, is Noel playing the Swedes. This matchup is a little bit of an interesting matchup just because of the options that Spain has got. In the early game, the Spanish have got a number of different options, including uh, the logistician. They can go for ATP. They can be going for a fast fortress. They can be going for an economic fast fortress with something like Spanish gold. They could be going for uh, something even more all in like the Piroshiki FF, which has got the halberdiers. So I'm curious to see what we're going to be seeing out of Harrison today, what we're going to be opting for. So we'll take a look at his deck once he's picked it up. He's starting out with a, a trading post as the uh, as his first actional option. Uh, we'll have a look over at Noel, see what he's up to. So a really good map for Noel, uh, primarily because if we take a look at the mini map, okay, Noel's got a lot of great spots to expand to. He's going to be sending one villager out here to the south. He'll send one out to the north. He'll build a single torp on each coin mine and then continue moving around the map in a clockwise and anti-clockwise fashion with each respective villager until it reaches a point like w when you reach this point over here and you can just drop down four uh, torps. Now, obviously, there's a trading post here, which is going to potentially scout that. And so that might ruin his plan. But it's a very good map. It's a very circular map for the Swedes. So a great, great start for him. Also picking up an 80 XP treasure in the middle here. We'll take a look at each quadrant and see what they've got. An 80 food treasure here for the Spanish player. Very nice. Native American warrior. A stray dog in need of rescue. A, near, a nearly mature bear club that you can tame. So let's take a look back over at this north quadrant. We've got a settler. We've got 50 coin. And that's about it. Some in-base treasures as well, including beavers, some XP. Nothing else really to, to look out for. Oh, actually, I take that back. 90 food right outside Harrison's base as well. So now we see we've got three settlers coming in for the uh, for the Swedish player. I like this deck a lot. Probably don't need to have both the two copper mines as well as the three copper mines in there. And we've got, uh, we've got Case Shot in here. Now, this is an unused card that we don't really see a lot of, so... Hopefully we get to see this. I would love to see this. He would definitely be getting uh, about 55 style points if he chooses to send case shot. Because these guys look absolutely awesome when they do their case shot. They do 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 it's, it's pretty crazy. We'll take a look over at Harrison. We'll see what Harrison is up to. Harrison. Oh, Harrison. Doing your logistician. Doing your crazy logistician stuff. Got the logistician now in queue. We'll take a look at his deck. And oh my lord. 1v1 logistician. Indeed 1v1 logistician. That is exactly what you're doing. So, got that second shipment in now. Probably going to be sending it right after the eye in uh, Exploration Age. And the, the explorer is now meeting up towards the north of the map. Victor Sui from Knoll is uh, taking a few shots from Sebastian de Torres. And uh, now we've got the, uh, I guess, the a little bit of a lull as both players are moving towards uh, their age ups. We've also got an age up potentially going to be going into queue for Noel. We'll take a look and see what he's aging up with. Doing a 15 vil age up, which I say would almost be standard at this point. And going to be going up with... Let's have a look. Is he doing logistician as well? Oh no, going up with the governor. Okay. Oh my lord, I thought he was going to be doing the logistician as well. I thought it was going to have the double logistician versus logistician play. But it wasn't meant to be. So going up with the governor here. So definitely one of the less used... Uh, politicians for the Swedes. I would say that we see the Philosopher Prince and the Two Cows, Two Settlers out a lot more than we do the Governor, but uh, definitely a popular choice nonetheless. Good herding coming in from Noel. So getting both of his two closest hunts in very quickly. He's got a hunt that's down here to the south, but ideally you'd like to leave this for the Torps. This hunt over here to the to the north, or, the, or rather this mine over to the north, doesn't really have any, uh, any hunt other than this one, which could be herded down eventually. We take a look now. So the uh, the Swedish explorer actually going to be picking up this treasure right under the nose of some villagers of uh, Harrison. And Noel actually picking that up and noticing. And he says, you know what? We're going to follow you down. We're going to see where you're going, what you're up to. And it looks like uh, Harrison doing a little bit of a cheeky, just setting, let, sending one villager down, keeping one villager up here to the north. I can't believe you, Harrison. You are so, so, so cheeky. So the first card that he sent was ATP. This was, this was really, really, really cute by Harrison. I love it to pieces. Two more villagers coming out here as well, so really making sure that he gets every single trading post, and sending in the three, um, the 300 resource, or 300 wood behind this as well. I thought he was coming up here for a forward base, and undoubtedly that's what Noel thought as well, 
and would have been preparing for that, but uh, actually just drops down the trading post instead. So very, very cheeky. Really nicely played. A villager now sneaking over towards the right side of the map. He hasn't scouted any of the coin mines yet, but he will suspect that there are coin mines uh, over here towards uh, the, just north of his villager. And now we see some some toxic walls going down on top of the uh, on top of the coin mine. So we'll have a look at Harrison. We'll see his perspective. These are actually quite good walls. As long as he's not making not doing these ones, he doesn't want to be doing the pillars. He wants to be doing the, the long walls. That's exactly what he needs to be doing. And just walling in this coin mine. Uh, but ideally, you don't even want to be walling in this coin mine. This is a very safe coin mine for the Swedish play. They're going to burn through this. They're going to get their tops up very quickly on this. I guess you are going to delay them, though. But ideally, you want to be walling off coin mines like this. This one here. Just to guarantee that they don't have torps on it. Two out of the four trading posts are now taken for the Spanish player. Barracks going up in a forward position as well. So Noel would know that he's going to be up against the logistician. Sending in the stagecoach as well as the next upgrade. 300 wood coming in again for Harrison. Harrison looking very good, very commanding right now. Moving his villager over towards this coin mine. Let's take a look and see if Noel's managed to find it. His, his villager has snuck up all the way outside Harrison's um, Harrison's base. And that's exactly what I, I mentioned earlier. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, just a torp here, a torp here, a torp here. Just three torps on the backside away from the line of sight of this um, of, of this trading post. I'm curious if we're actually going to see it. Otherwise, you guess you could go torp here, torp here. But it's hard to know exactly where that falls. And now more walls going down from Harrison. Harrison doing a great job of being toxic. So a really nice job here. Opting to go with the five crossbows instead of the five pike opening. And more walls coming out from Harrison. Harrison just being absolutely on the ball with this. Knowing exactly what he needs to do to stop this the uh, Swedish player from booming. So we take a look at the Swedish player. We see he's got the outpost up in base on the coin mine. So a little bit more difficult of a spot here because he's not going to be able to top right here. Uh, so going to be able to fit a top here. But probably might just get a top in here just in case. And now we've got the ironwork coming in. We did see the 700 wood as the second card that was sent in. And the five Corollians are now moving out across the map. But where do they go from here? I guess they come out to this villager, which is quite slow. We did actually see them, the waypoint move out here. Uh, I'm not sure where they are going. I can't actually see the waypoint, but I do suspect it's going to be here. But this villager definitely not long for this world. Getting snared up by the explorer. Victor Sweet doing a great job of keeping this explorer. Keeping tabs on this explorer. Knowing where this explorer is at all times. And now we've got torps going up in the north of the map. I, I mentioned earlier that this is the type of coin mine that you want to be walling up as Harrison instead of walling up a coin mine like this. This is going to be very easy for him to be able to retake from Noel's perspective. But this coin mine like this is a much more attractive mine. And now we see a torp going up right outside Harrison's base. Very toxic. I absolutely love it. I'd love to see him up. There should be a coin mine somewhere here. Let's have a look. There it is. That's the coin mine. So I'd love to see on this coin mine as well. Uh, to be to be used. And we see the villager moving up. Oh my lord, we're gonna potentially see it. So that's exactly the way that you play Sweden. You gotta cockroach those torps into the corners of your map. One villager going down now for Noel. We'll take a look and see uh, what he's got on the way of shipments. Nothing, is, uh, nothing has come in just yet. Potentially gonna see that 700 coin come in as the next shipment. Maybe look for an age up. Could be the blueberries that comes in. It is indeed the blueberries that come in. Two torps going up now on the north face. Normally when I'm placing these torps like this, I would prefer to place the back ones first because there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to fit tor four torps on this mine. So try and place the back ones first and then you try and fit in the front ones because I think judging from this from, from right here, you might be able to get one torp in squeezed right up against this wall. I don't think you're going to get a torp here though, unfortunately. Now we've got more torps going up. So this is one of the things I talked about. This is why you don't make these pillars. You want to make these longer walls like this. So managing to get this up, uh, nonetheless. Picking a fight with some bears now. A nearly mature bear club. The cub is going to be uh, is going to be taken control of. The four trading posts for Harrison are going to be giving him a decent economy. Not heading up to the fortress age just yet. Still in that second age. Putting out a bit of pressure onto the map. He's got a fair decent mass right now. Harrison needs to be doing something with this mass. So that's the thing. He's not doing anything. He knows that these, uh, these torps are up behind his base. Let's take a look. We actually see a second torp going up. So this is very, very nice. I suspect we're probably going to see a third torp here as well. Just five pikes would go a long way in a situation like this. Ideally, as Harrison, you want to be having control of every single or vision of every single coin mine on the map. So this one in the middle of the map, just leave a pikeman. Just leave a pikeman up here. Leave a pikeman up here to the north because we've got so many torps now that are just uh, that are really uncontested and enable the Swedish player to keep up with Harrison despite sending in the logistician. 
looks like Sebastian Dur Durantes is going to be going down. There he goes. So Harrison going to be keeping all of his, uh, his well, not all of them, but most of his uh, trading posts on experience. For the Spanish player, experience is going to be giving him a lot more uh, bang for his buck, especially because he's got these logistician cards that he does want to be sending in. Keep in mind, he hasn't sent in a single H2 card yet at this point. These are all just essentially cards that he can send just in case. Uh, but other than that, he's he's looking at, at keeping just these age one cards and sending those in because he's going to be getting a lot of value from those. Mass now really beginning to build for Harrison. He's up 15, uh, 1,500 score. Huge amount of crossbows. 30 crossbows as well as 23 musketeers. There's going to be more than enough to deal with Ar with uh, Noel's mass. Noel's got... Uh, 15 Corollians and Gentle Pete, but I don't think Gentle Pete has really got the DPS out for all of these 30 uh, crossbows. So, Gentle Pete, watch out, Gentle Pete. He's not going to do it. Not like this. He takes an arrow to the knee and goes down, unfortunately. Villager going down for Noel. The push is definitely on. Harrison probably senses that, uh, that there's an age up in queue, or at least going to be in queue very shortly. Knows that there's not a lot of, uh, of pressure that he can be applying out to the map. So he says, I'm just going to come for the throat. And that's exactly what he does. We've got the crossbows in a great position here. The Corollians are going to be dealt with very aptly. One crossbow going, or one Corollian going down. Explorer going down again for the second time, I think. Victor Sui going down. And Corollians now sneaking out to the bottom. He needs to keep these Corollians alive and needs to wait. So we're going to see two Falconets coming in as the first shipment. Let's see. There it is, two Falconets now coming in. And Harrison would know that the two Falconets are on the way. So he needs to try and force a fight before those two Falconets get here because those two Falconets are what are going to swing this potential game and take it from Harrison having a huge lead when it comes to the amount of, of military units he's got and, and potentially swinging around. And we can actually see that Harrison's doing the right thing, getting right underneath the town center, exactly what he needs to be doing. And this is exactly it. So Harrison... Oh, so now in Noel's perspective, what he needs to be doing... Oh, he's buying back his Explorer, being very, very cheeky. This is exactly what he needs to be doing, snaring these units. He needs to make sure that the Corollians are right under his town center as he pops his Falconets, and then he needs to pull the Falconets away with the Corollians to try and keep them alive. So he's got units on both sides that he can do this with, so it depends on what, what side Harrison goes to. We see that he, he hasn't really committed to a single side, so hopefully we've got the Falconets that are about to come out. He's going to try and get a pull in here. Does he get it off? He's managed to pull. We see the pull the, moving out now. Getting only a single volley out onto the Falconets. Miniman being called. Snaring happening underneath the town center. Needs to buy back the Explorer as well. Falconets are in a great spot here. Going to be able to clean up. We see the melee musketeers moving in. Needs to be microing back these Falconets. Absolutely lovely clean up here from Harrison. Uh, from uh, Noah. Five more Corollians popping out. And we do see musketeers getting on top of the Falconets now. The, the Volskaya Sictors are slowly going to be picking off the musketeers. Getting off a huge volley. But absolutely cleaning up the... the uh, the push from Harrison here, and this is why Fast Fortress, or Semi-Fast Fortress in particular, is just so damn strong. And that's and that, that's exactly it. Like, we, we, we really take a look at that and see an absolute huge swing right here just because of those Falconets. Those Falconets are what change the entire battle. That's why the two Falconets is the best shipment in the game. Impressive stuff to see from Noel. So we're going to speed up the game a little bit here. Take a look what happens. Noel is in a commanding position at this point. We see that he is absolutely happy with his economy at this point. So 180 top population. And now just sending in his upgrades. Going to be getting in the veteran Corollians as well as getting in the snap lock upgrade. So going to be taking control of the trading post line. So potentially uh, taking control of them uh, as well as uh, as taking them out from his opponent. Going to be sieging them out. Maybe potentially... Uh, oh, we've got a charge going down. I didn't expect to see a charge. The charge is going to be more than capable of cleaning up a, a bit of a, a micro misplay right there. But uh, nonetheless, getting in on top of them. We've now got some Corollians as well on the south of the field. Uh, a little bit of a forward backs and a strange position. But now the Corollians continue to, to reinforce. And at this point, all that Noel needs to do is just keep making Corollians. He doesn't need to do anything other than that. He can just make Corollians at this point. Now, one of the things to avoid doing in this situation is only sieging a, a trading post with five Corollians. Because this trading post is able to defend itself. We actually see it's potentially going to be able to take down all of these Corollians just by itself. So one of the things to think about, you ideally want to be sieging with about maybe 10 to 15 Corollians. This is a good amount to be sieging with, 20 Corollians. Uh, and, and that's going to be able enabling you to take down these trading posts extra quick. But we take a look at these this trading post. Slowly and slowly, more health is, is being lost from the trading post. But ever so slowly, the Corollians are falling down. 
Harrison managing to hold out on the front despite being down almost 7,000 score at this point. Getting pushed back. Noel is back into his base. But Noel going age four, going up with the engineer. Only 2,000 HP. And slowly, this trading post continues to burn down. I'm curious as to whether we're actually going to see it burnt down or not. I'm suspecting that we probably won't. It's got less than 500 HP on it now. And Noel doing the right thing, keeping his units back safe uh, before he ages up. He wants to make sure he ages up, gets those extra two Falconets. And here we go. We actually see the the battle of down to the death. The fifth Corollian finally going to be taking out the trading post. Does he get it? Does he manage to take it down? No, he doesn't. 144 HP left. And this is exactly why you don't want to be sieging ATP with just a small amount of units because they are able to defend themselves. So five Corollians going down to that trading post. And uh, and the trading post really being uh, uh, the, the, the victor in this game. We'll tune back in with Harrison, see what he's up to. We don't have any age three in queue at all, despite having a 700 coin on the ground. Has Harrison got his upgrades? Let's take a look and see. Harrison does have his Steel Traps upgrade, but he doesn't have his Grey Coats. And this is really the reason why he's losing. And Noel reaching the Industrial Age and Harrison just giving up right there. Uh, there wasn't even a fight. Harrison just said, you know what? I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that. And uh, and appreciating that Noel was just very far ahead. So Noel now pulling ahead uh, about... Uh, well, let's, let's take a look. Noel is uh, picking up a victory here with Sweden. Uh, so let's fix that one up for you guys so sweden is a two-point civilization i do uh if, if i recall correctly i'll just get somebody to correct me if i'm wrong there i think we we moved sweden from a three point to a, a two-point civilization let me just do a check of the rules so swedish are two points and there we go harris is actually in the chat saying i had no clue top mines were torped i think i had him fully under siege yeah there, there you go it's really about just finding all those those coin mines on the map and, and saying which one can I which one can I torp up as best as I can and and I mean that this this was it I mean there were three torps over on this one he had more torps on his side of the on your side of the map than he had on your side he's got four here three here three here that's ten in total and then he's only got three six in his base seven eight down here so more torps on uh, on your side than he had on his side so impressive stuff so we'll take a look now. So, Noel in, uh, within striking distance. Harrison also within striking distance. Now, keep in mind, it's the first to 11 points at this point. So, if Harrison wants to win on the next game, he'd need to play the United States, whereas Noel could be limited to any of the three-point civilizations. He's still got quite a lot of options in that pool. Let's have a look and see uh, at the timelines. We'll take a look at, uh, at resource gathered. We actually see Harrison able to keep up with Noel up until the 12th minute. So, very impressive stuff uh, from the Spaniard. Take a look at both players at the 10 minute mark with about 12k resources gathered. Impressive stuff. We'll take a look at the uh, the villager graph as well because I do understand a few villagers were lost that game by Noel. Yep. And uh, one going down from Harrison as well in the early game. We do remember it was chased away by the explorer. So only losing about two villagers. Is that? Yeah, two villagers. Three villagers in the end. And then we'll take a look at military unit population. We just see that big swing. So as soon as he hits the fortress age, Noel manages to, to get those two falconets out after 40 seconds, he manages to pop. So he goes from 21 population up to 37 population. So that's 31 uh, with the Falconets and then the six minute man and then the five Corollians popping out shortly after that as well. 